Let's get started with something that's really simple that probably a lot of us are familiar with, and that's fonts. Fonts allow us to change the way text looks and the size of the text and the attributes of the text. We'll go ahead and select sales report in F2 here. And here is the text, as you can see. On the Home tab, we have a drop down here under the Font section. All the stuff here has to do with fonts. And there are just loads of things that we can change with fonts. We can click the drop down here and change the actual font that shows up there. And that's the way that the text is going to appear. Let's go with Cooper Standard Black. Okay, notice that the font, the way the text looks, is totally different now. I'll go ahead and do the same thing to our November text. And I believe that was Cooper Standard Black. Okay, and then we want to make the text bigger as well. So with that cell selected, we can click this little A with an up, and notice that it's a big A, and this is a little a. To make the text bigger, we click this button. And every time we click it, it's going to get a little bit bigger. And then if we click this one, it gets smaller. So let's leave it at 18. And we'll go ahead and take this one up to 18 as well. And let's make these just a little bit bigger, like 14. And if you want, you can actually format several cells at once just by clicking and dragging and highlighting all the cells that you want to format. So now we'll take all of them up to 14 at the same time. One of the things you'll notice probably right away is that when we made the text larger, now it's really getting cut off because it can't fit inside of there. But each one of these columns and the rows, in fact, have a specific size that is preset but we can change it. So you're looking right now at the default size, but if we want to change the size, there's two things that we can do. We can right click on the column, and that's on the column title itself, and go down to column width. I'll select that, and you can see the current column width value, and you can enter a value here if you want, and then hit the OK button. But there's in fact an easier way to do it, and I'll go ahead and cancel that. And that is by simply pointing to in between two different columns. Notice when I move my mouse there, I get this vertical bar with two arrows. Well, if you click and drag after you get that, you are now adjusting the width dynamically. So you can see, you know, you might not know actual values that you want to enter there, but you can click and drag real easy to see if it fits. So let's go ahead and make quantity a little smaller. And unit cost needs to be a little bigger. Okay, so we can see it. That's good. You can do the same thing with the uh, rows as well. So you can click and drag to make those larger or smaller. And that's something that you'll find yourself doing from time to time, just resizing column widths and row heights. But the next thing we want to do is a little bit of alignment to the text. Each one of these right now, by default, regular text is what's called left aligned. Meaning, if I click on it, you will see that inside the cell, it starts on the left, and then it goes to the right. And if it happens to bleed over, then it'll just go into the next cell, unless there's an actual value in that cell. So right now, we can see the whole thing because there's nothing in this cell. Okay, don't be confused by the fact that you can read the whole thing, and it goes over top of this one. If I actually typed something here, and hit enter. Now notice description gets chopped off there because there's an actual value here. Let's go ahead and hit the delete key and remove that. But let's say that I wanted to align things a little differently. For example, um, over here on unit cost, it's kind of pushed to the left and I'd really rather have it centered. So in order to do that, we can use the alignment buttons here in the alignment section. We have left aligned, center aligned, and right align or right justify. So if I want to center it, I click the center button and notice that now the text is centered. And that works the same with all of them. And yes, you can do multiple cells at once. So I've now centered all three of those cells. Now the beauty of alignment is that it's dynamic. So once I've aligned something centered, 
then I can resize the cell width and it is still centered. Okay? So now we want to move on to L2 here, which contains November 2007. I actually, just for formatting purposes, I wanted that to show, I wanted it to move to the left and be right up against this right edge. So to do that, I'm going to right align it. So with the text selected, I click right align. And now you can see that it's aligned on the right side of the cell and it moves over to the left. Now one thing that you'll find uh, with text, especially in situations like this, is that when text goes over, it spans multiple cells and multiple columns, then it's kind of difficult to figure out which one you're supposed to click on in order to select that cell. For example, if I click K2, K2 is selected, and it looks like maybe November would be, but it's not. If you look in the formula bar, nothing shows up. That's because it's not actually selected. It's actually contained here, but that cell is right aligned. So that's why it looks the way it does. So what we can do to kind of make things a little bit easier on us is use a function called Merge and Center. What this will do is combine those cells into one and then center the text inside of those cells, or inside of that one new cell, actually. So I'll click and drag to define the area that I want to merge. And incidentally, I have to make sure that only one of your cells contains data, otherwise something's going to get thrown away. So in this case, L2 is the only real data in these three cells. Okay, so I'm going to merge and center that by clicking this button here. Now it doesn't look really much different, right? But now if I select anywhere there, if I select here, that whole thing is selected. And you can see that it actually is in the formula bar. So if I select there or there, this is all now one cell. And incidentally, that one cell is called J2. And that shows up here in the name box. So when we merge and center cells, it gets or inherits the name of the leftmost column. And I'll go ahead and do it here for sales report as well. I'll span all three of these cells and then merge and center. And now we're dealing with just one cell called F2. Now we have just one more thing to look at before we move on. And that is text attributes. And those, the three most popular ones, are bold, italic, and underline. And it's real simple to apply them. If you've used any kind of word processor, they all work the same. Select the text or the cell that you want to highlight, that you want to uh, give an attribute to. And if you click the B, then you bold the text. It gets a little bit darker and thicker. And we'll select description, bold that. Quantity, bold that. And yes, you can select multiple cells and apply the attributes at once. Okay, and then to turn that off, I'll select description again. It's kind of like a toggle switch. So right now you can see that it's on, and I'll click it again, and now it's off. Okay, so it's just like a toggle switch. Same thing for italics, which just makes things look like they're leaning a little bit. Okay, and then underline. We'll put an underline under the text. Right, so let's go ahead and turn underline off, and turn bold on, and yes, you can have multiple attributes applied at the same time. So we'll turn those two off. And there we are. Now at this point, the only thing visually that we want to do has to do with that conditional formatting uh, for the values here. But I'm going to wait until we've got uh, some of this other information entered in. And we'll go ahead and start that in the next exercise.